Meantime, Evercore ISI is warning earnings season will have a tough time measuring up to Wall Street expectations, and that could mean this market rebound may be short-lived. Julian Emanuel is a firm's senior managing director. He joins us here on set. Julian, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. So basically, everybody's too optimistic when it comes to earnings. Well, so we started celebrating New Year basically about seven or eight weeks ago. Uh, and from where we sit, whether you think this is a soft landing or you think this is a slightly on the harder side landing, which is our base case, we think there'll be a mild recession, uh, very brief at mid-year. The fact is 11.5% implied earnings growth for 2024 is just, that's high in a no landing scenario. And normally it doesn't necessarily matter because the expectation is that earnings estimates get walked down. But the amount of enthusiasm that has been engendered into share prices now, the positioning, the sentiment really do make things a bit vulnerable here. It, it seems like there could be a great deal of risk to the downside just because of the positioning of people being so optimistic going into this. And so even a ratcheting down to a mild recession, that adjustment um, could mean greater downside than than one might normally have if we weren't so positioned in that way. Well, we actually sort of take a, a, a different tack here, Melissa, is, is that if you think about it, right, think about the last two years. Think about where we are today. We were at the same price in the index we were at the beginning of 2022, at the end of 2023, and earnings were 219 in 2022. They were go they'll be 219 in 2023, and we're looking at 221. So a lot of this has been sort of time wearing off and sort of grinding things down. Whereas if you go down to the stock level, a lot of what we've seen is sort of what we saw today, the AI type names leading the market higher and in the industrial names where we think there's likely going to be weakness going forward, mm. sort of causing this dispersion. So one big difference, though, if earnings are the same, we were going into a very big Fed tightening cycle and we're now coming out. And so that, to me, seems to be a big difference. How do you think about that? Well, which is why the multiple has expanded the way it has off of, of the, the October uh, trough. Uh, we know the Fed has, has made it pretty clear that they are behind us. But the flip side of that, again, is that if you look at the market pricing in between five and six cuts this year, frankly, history tells you you don't want that to happen. That happens in, in an environment where growth disappoints to the downside. And again, from our point of view, we don't necessarily think that the growth disappointing to the downside is going to be the major sort of down 20 or down 25 catalyst that you normally see in a recession. It's likely to be much more muted than that. But the fact is, is that the expectations in general are just absolutely great in terms of inflation coming in, earnings being solid, uh, and, and growth not disappointing. So, Julian, over, I think, the last 50 years or so, the average peak to trough decline that you'll get in any market in any given year is like 10, 12, 13 percent or something like that. If you're expecting the, ex, uh, the consensus of 11 percent earnings growth to be flat this year, <clears throat> would you expect to have a greater than a 10, 12 percent peak to trough decline? Because to me, if last year was all about multiple expansion and you have to ratchet down those expectations at high valuations, that would kind of suggest we're going to have a lot more volatility. No, there's no question about it. Like, you look at last year, a peak to trough of uh, a little over 10 percent uh, from the July high to the October low and the rest of the year reasonably volatile. We did have a banking crisis for about five minutes in March. We'll remember that. Uh, but but honestly, the normal year, as, as you said, the normal non-recession year is more on the order of 13 percent. So our view that you could get peak to trough of down 16, 17 percent is actually quite reasonable, particularly when you think about the geopolitical and political backdrop.